So let me just run you through quickly some of the menu features here in the JVC JYLS300. We'll go into the menu here. And the first one is camera function. You can turn color bars on or off. There's flicker correction. So if you happen to be uh, you know, shooting at a power frame rate and you go to an NTSC country and you get that flickering sensation from... Um, on the fluorescent lights you can change that as well shading not really sure what that does uh, I haven't got an instruction manual with this being a pre-production model so I'm not going to leave that one alone shutter you can change between step and variable uh, the auto exposure speed you can change there between fast middle and slow automatic gain control you can change the limits for that uh, auto iris open we're not using that at the moment it's got a manual stop lens on there um, the the, audio, the exposure index limit, so you can limit that as well. Smooth transition, now this one is really actually pretty cool because what you can do is actually you've got two white balance settings on here, an A and a B. So what you can do is you can get an A balance and you can get a B balance, say one's indoors, one's outdoors. And by just walking indoors, what you can do is when you flick between A and B settings, it'll do a real gradual or fast transition between the color temperatures instead of just going from bang to bang from cold to warm or, or vice versa really good feature for uh, news type sort of work or documentaries uh, the gain settings you can change here of course low low middle and, and high this camera is only rated at ISO 400 and it only goes up to 6400 so just be aware of that uh, the, the handle zoom speed on there we don't have a zoom capable lens on here at the moment so they will be grayed out Iris dial can be used to control the auto exposure level, the shutter or the iris. Grip zoom, this is pretty cool. You can actually do the focus with the grip zoom, which is quite a unique feature, pretty cool. Auto focus assist is off because we've got a manual focus lens on here at the moment. And so if we pump back out there, we then go to camera process. If I go into camera process, you can change the detail here. So you'll see it sharpen you know, you can go all the way up to plus 10 if you wanted to. And I'll just put it all the way down to minus 10. You know, just depending on how you want to configure your look. You can also, um, let's we'll get back out there. Master Black, of course, I can control this. A lot of range on the Master Black setting. You know, I can make it ridiculously dark. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but you've got a lot of scope here to change what you want to see. Vice versa, if I go up the scale, you can see I can bring up shadow information, which is pretty good, actually. I think it's set a little bit low on the JVC. I tend to run it about plus five like that, so I'll just leave it on there. Black toe, so you can either compress the blacks, stretch them, leave them on normal. Uh, of course, if you've got them activated, you can change those independently levels as well, which is really cool. Uh, knee control, of course, manual or auto. Uh, I prefer to have it on manual. You can adjust that, of course, as well, and the sensitivity. White clip, you can fully adjust. Gamma setting here, you can go between standard and cinema. Now, uh, there's more settings further on in the menu to change these here. Um, you know, it's a good option. You can actually manipulate the, uh, the picture profile quite well. Uh, so I'm going to keep that on cinema. Uh, now the level here, you can actually go up and down and you'll see what it's doing in terms of giving you... I don't know whether it's necessarily, it's probably not giving you more dynamic range or anything, but it's just affecting the overall look of the image if you wish to grade it later on. So wide dynamic range mode, so you can either have it on weak, as you'll see there, where it's starting to clip the highlights, natural or strong, uh, you know, so it's moving them up. I haven't really tested this too much to see how much noise this adds to the picture, but I'm just going to leave that off for the time being. White balance here, you can have auto white balance, you can change all the presets, uh, great options. Color matrix here, so here's your three other choices, so you got it on standard. Cinema vivid, which we'll see, just gives it a little bit more punch. And cinema subdued, which is really quite a flat image, um, you know, good if you want to grade it up. I'll leave it on there for the time being. The color gain there, so again, you'll see I can take as much color out I want to make it even super flatter 
or if I go up you'll see I can add an awful lot of color in there as well so good finite controls to be able to change things in there and of course you can reset the entire thing time code features all the normal time code features that you would expect in a camera um, being able to change everything with the different presets um, as you'll see they're all there go back LCD viewfinder so you've got shooting assist mode so you can change that and change the strength on it um, actually works really well got zebras as well the only thing that's missing on here is no waveform or histogram which is a little bit of a letdown uh, marker settings so you can turn the marker settings on you won't see them pop up on here but you can see I can change all the aspect ratios which is you know fantastic look at all the choices you've got really good in a you know uh, you know in a, in a cheaper end camera here to be able to do all that you can then change the shadings and everything as well safety zones center mark you won't be able to see those pop up on here uh, display settings all the different things that you can change uh, even the battery's great look change between time capacity voltage i wish you could do that on some other cameras <laughs> pretty good date time all the usual shutter you can have in degrees or seconds gain in db or iso depending on what you want to run with um, viewfinder all the different settings there for your viewfinder contrast everything else backlight all those things are there as well AV set here so video set here is uh, you know got the displays going on or off onto my thing here this is where you change the the uh, settings here for HDMI and SDI or SDI and HDMI now um, you can only output uh, HD over SDI you can do ultra HD over HDMI now the great thing about this as well as what I'm doing right now is, is actually the camera is in 4k mode if I click back out of the menu you'll see it's saying 3840 by 2160 so it's recording UHD at 150 megabits per second but I'm also able to send a signal out via the SDI and record in HD if I want so that is very handy indeed just go back in to here again so this is where I change these. Uh, the resolution will obviously change on there depending on whether I've got it on HDMI or SDI. Uh, SDI record trigger, you can turn that. Oops, we'll just get back out of that. Turn the SDI record trigger on or off, which is nice as well. Go back out. Audio set, tons of different um, benefits in here for, uh, for for doing proper professional audio, all the sort of features and things you want sending all the different levels etc etc system here if we click in this is where you do your record set so record format here you'll see here's my choices so 4k hd sd or hd and web and depending on what i have on there we'll be able to change the frame rate um, and also you can actually change what's getting recorded on the b card here as you'll see it's got a and b so if you want to change uh, records record two different things on the cards great thing to do now this is uh this is jvc's variable scan mapping so you'll see on here this is uh, a setting so this actually allows you to uh, to tune whatever lenses you happen to be running on here if you're running lenses that don't obviously cover a super 35 millimeter sensor like a micro four thirds uh, lens which this is a micro four thirds mount you'll see it will show me what I'm getting with various lenses, what it's going to map off the actual sensor, what my field of view is going to be. So there's, there's your micro four thirds, what micro four thirds is going to look like on the overall sensor. That's the image you're going to get. If I was in HD, this goes all the way down to um, showing you what a super 16 mil lens would look like on there. Really cool. Uh, record mode, normal, pre-record. So if we have pre-record, you can actually change it from it's five seconds in 4K. If you go to HD, you can go all the way up to 15 seconds on there. There's also a clip continuous, so like an old broadcast camera, if you don't want individual clips, you'll just create one long clip no matter how many times you button on or off. It's also frame recording and interval recording, so all those features are locked in there. Slot mode, how do you want it to do? Do you want to make it dual copies? Do you want to make a backup? Do you want to have it in series? Really nice features to have as well. Four gig spanning for the cards. You can have on or off depending on whether you're using a Mac or a PC. 
clip set, metadata, all there. Just click back out. So there you go. There's a run through of the menu and items that you can change on the JVC JGY LS300.